Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, brought to you by people who made Daimyo's Fall and So Long My World, Daimyo's Fall Dice Tuners, a game in which you're going to be battling with up to four players by rolling dice, allocating to the sides of your card, and attacking. Players are going to have weaknesses based on the dies, each of the character cards are going to have their own unique passives as well as active abilities, and of course it's going to be based around initiative, being that uh, you're going to need to be able to do your attacks first and choosing your die first, has a bit of die rolling, has a bit of strategy as to how you place the die, and of course making sure you get your allocation correct so that way you can utilize your full power of your characters. Has uh, turns and rounds, so we play multiple rounds throughout the game, and the player who gathers the most points is going to be the winner, and uh, that's the basic idea of the game. Let's go ahead and show you below what you're going to get and then how to play the game. So here we have Daimyo's Fall dice tuners and everything included, or at least for a two or three player sample of the game. Of course when you play with more players, you're gonna get more cards and whatnot, but this is gonna be giving you enough information as to what you're gonna get in the game, such as, of course, two different types of cards, whether it be the character cards or whether it be your action cards or skill cards. At the bottom of the skill cards will have initiative, and on your player cards, it's going to have the name of the character, the artwork, it's passive, and then it's bonus, provided you get the die in the right placement during the combat phase. Every player is going to start with four cards from this deck here, the action deck, and uh, then there's going to be three different types types of die, and these die also have their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, normally you're going to have like water beat fire, but in this case it's the opposite. So I think it's fire beats water, and water beats uh, the earth, and earth beats fire, and that'll give you a bonus to combat, and of which of course you're going to be rolling die and allocating them and whatnot. But for the most part, including a bag for the die, this is what you're going to be getting in the game, Daimyo's Fall Dice Tuners. Alright, let's come up and I'll explain a turn and uh, how combat works. So to begin the game, it's pretty simple. You're going to start with four cards that are action cards in your hand that will also have initiative and abilities, of course. And then you're going to deal out three characters from the deck, more with more players, but I'm just going to show you a two-player variant of the game. The characters, of course, are going to be yours to choose based on cards you place face down and reveal at the same time showing off the initiative. You're then going to be able to gather based on your initiative first, second, and third, as well as being able to play an additional card to gather a more important character, which I'll show you how that kind of works. Not more important, but not more costly, I should say. After you've gathered your characters, remove that deck from play. Now you're going to be using just uh, your cards in hand and your character, as well as the die. You'll be gathering three of, uh, three of the die, one of each different color, rolling them, and then selecting them in turn or initiative order, leaving out the die that you don't use, and that works for all number of players. You're going to go through that three times for a two-player game, to which case you'll have three die out and three die in for each player. Then you're going to set it up in turn order, initiative order, the die that you choose to play. And it'll also be based on not only strengths and weaknesses against your opponent, but also based on your character being able to get his strengths and his weaknesses put together based on the cards. Some of the cards will see like, you need three red die in order to activate his ability. And of course your opponents will know that too, so they'll have to draft accordingly to make sure you don't get that. Then the battle will take place, uh, where you're going to be placing down an action card or a bluff card, and then you're going to reveal them at the same time, count the uh, attack value of your uh, die, as well as any bonuses you might have against your opponent's attack die and bonuses he or she may have, and then you're going to go ahead and see who wins that round. Uh, there's three specific rounds, right, left, and in front, or forward facing, and you're going to gain points based on your wins, and it will continue going on like that. Next turn, ne the next round after everybody has done that, players are then going to get to select new characters, as well as gain three new action cards, and continue playing as such. Pretty simple as to how it works couple little interesting little strategic uh, maneuvers you can do. Let's go ahead and show you down below how a round works and then I'll tell you what I think about it. Once again, we're now back to Daimyo's Fall Dice Tuners, and I set it up for two players. As you can see, there's three characters out here for the character deck. We've got all the die that we're going to be using for the game, and then, of course, our action cards, which I've already dealt four to each player. Those players are going to look at their hand, and they're going to notice that there's an ability on it, there's a title, and then, of course, there's the initiative value. It can go from one to, I think, about four or five. And uh, players are going to look at them and select one to play face down to try and gain initiative to choose to... Uh, be able to purchase these guys first, or pick one of them. In which 
case, uh, this player will pick one of these here, and this player over here is going to select this one here. The active uh, ability does not take place, but they get flipped over at the same time, and the person who has the most, which is this guy with three, this guy has two, is then going to get to choose to go first. Uh, also, these are going to be indicative of, of, of what characters you can buy based on their value. So in this case, he picks first, but he can only pick something that has three or lower, unless he would like to discard an extra card from his hand, such as this one, to pick something that is a little stronger, like this guy here. So now he has three and three, which is six. He can go ahead and pick this guy. He's not going to do that, though. He's just going to go ahead and select one of these two here, and he'll select uh, this gal over here. And then it'll be my turn, and I, of course, could do the same thing. I could discard an extra card and try and get her, but I'll just pick this one as well. Now these are not going to be needed anymore. After that, you're going to have your character in front of you. You're not going to need the character or the uh, the deck uh, for now, for this round anymore. You just have your singular character. In a multiplayer game or more than two players, you would do the same thing, adding more characters, though, and you utilizing the same amount of cards or the same type of cards. All right, so the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to take these things here and you're going to uh, roll them. And based on the fact that the person who has the highest initiative will be the one who selects the die first. And remembering the strengths and weaknesses. Now, before we get into the, uh, talking about how these go back and forth, I'll show you. This here is basically a shield. It does not let you win, but you also can't lose. It's like a protection. This one here, this symbol, is going to basically be your uh, value of attack is based on your character's initiative value or power value here. Mon, I believe is what it's called. That's a two. So if you had that five there, it would be very, very powerful. And then these slashes indicate one, two, and three power. Now the drafting is going to be going on based on initiative order, and this player wants red, so he's going to select that. This player is then going to go, oh, well, I probably want blue, so I'll select this one. This one will go away. The next three die are going to come out, and they're going to roll, and then this player is going to get to select. Now, uh, he, he or she wants blue, so she'll probably take that, but of course that player wants another red. That means that green's going to go, and then uh, once again another roll. Now, both players need to have their right colors in order to have their active abilities, uh, and this one here is scary. He's going to definitely take this red one here, which means that uh, once he's taken these red ones, uh, he's going to have the ability to get plus three to all of his power. Uh, in this case, she can take that one there. Uh, any leftover die, for instance, these guys here are green, uh, represent what cards you can play in your hand. The cards have different colors, and as you can see, there's blue and uh, red here, but there's also green. And only green are going to be able to be played. You're also going to have a bluff card that you can go ahead and utilize in the game. Next is in initiative order, players are going to be placing down these die in the north, west, and east areas of their character cards, which will work in a two, three, and four player game because it basically will attack different players. But in this case, it's just going to be head on. My front to his front, my left to his right, my right to his left. So playing here, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and select this one here. This player play here, I'll play here. He'll play here and I'll play here. I think it was a three. All right, and then after that is done, we'll select, uh, it's, I think it's specifically which ones you want to go first with, but I uh, will select this one here. Players will then place a card face down, in which case I would select uh, a bluff card in this case, which doesn't do anything, but this player might want to select something of use because he actually has green cards. If you lose, you score a point, and this one is switch one die on the field. This is a plus three strength, so but this th strength doesn't work because it's red, so only green cards work, so he's going to actually do nothing there. Uh, he's got a attack, which says once per round, before resolving an attack, you may re-roll your die. He doesn't want to do that, actually, because these are all great. Uh, and then he also has the uh, Suratatsra. I can't read that exactly backwards, but it's plus three to his combat, making it very, very powerful, as well as the fact that this is actually going to get a bonus against this, because uh, this is uh, the weakness to that. Uh, this one here says, before anyone chooses, you may re-roll two die uh, from... Uh, from the pool. So you could if you want to reroll die from the pool. And then Ice, ice Wind. Uh, you and Oyasu can't be targeted by other cards' effects. So cards actually wouldn't affect this, this character or yourself. That's pretty good. That's really good, in fact. Unfortunately, though, it looks like he's going to lose combat here. Even if we placed another one down, which I can't, literally can't play any cards because I don't have any green ones. Had I actually chosen a red one on the second draft, that probably would have been a better idea. But if I could have played this card, so if this actually wasn't there, it was this, uh, I could play this one here, and he could play this one here, and then you'd flip them over at the same time. And based on initiative value is which one is actually going to activate. So this is a four, and that's a three. That means this does not activate, but this one does. And the other player must discard a card. So we would, in fact, have to discard one of these guys here. And then, of course, uh, the attack would go through, and in case he would win this one here. So uh, this one's going to end up being a tie, but we can go ahead and play another card. I'll put this here, and then he can put this one here. We'll reveal it. Uh, he's got a plus six, and 
and if he loses, he scores a point. I get a strength plus one, and it works even if I don't have initiative, and he does have initiative. So uh, luckily, this, that doesn't matter, though, so I still get a plus one strength, but that's still a tie. So regardless, neither of these actually make it much of a difference. And then, of course, he's going to score points based on his victories. After he scores his points based on his victories, you're going to put all the die back into the pool, and then you're going to go ahead and have every player draw a three cards from the action deck so three more cards will go to him and three more will go to me and uh, then you're going to go ahead and take this deck back again here and uh, you're going to oh, good and then you're going to go ahead and flip over three new characters once again and continue the game as such these characters will be gone because they've been used and you'll be able to select new characters based on your initiative of course the only difference now is that the first player to choose is going to be the one that has the least amount of points so in this case this player would get to choose first uh, in regards to uh, these things here, or in regards to the pick and the dice and whatnot. So basically, initiative is going to change uh, in that aspect. But otherwise, uh, for playing combat, it's still going to be relying heavily on, on these symbols here, as well as the ability to play the cards. And of course, all the different characters do different abilities. They have different requirements for them. This requires three blue. This one, you're going to need all different colors here, and they have interchangeable icons on them. And they all have bonuses to either attacks or different skills or abilities and whatnot. But I think you get the idea of the game. It's a quick combat game that reminds me kind of something like Cat Girl Deathmatch, but with the Daimyo's Fall kind of theme and added a, a bunch of new and interesting uh, uh, aspects to the game. And of course, uh, using the die to allocate different locations. Anyway, that's the basic idea of Daimyo's Fall Dice Tuners. Let's come up and talk about it. All right, so what do I think about Dice Tuners? Well, first of all, Daimyo's Fall has some beautiful artwork and the game just came in recently. So I'm excited to see what it's gonna be like as far as the original game is concerned and uh, how the rules all were, you know, if they were adjusted and whatnot. Uh, from my original review of that, I enjoyed that game. It was fun and it had a little competitive edge. This one here is a lot simpler. It's a straightforward game in which you're going to be utilizing initiative to draft characters, to then draft dice, to then battle based on strengths and weaknesses, and of course passive and active abilities on the cards. And uh, all the different characters have unique and interesting as aspects to them. And of course there is a ton of original different art that changes throughout all of them. I think some of them or I think they actually may even be related to the Daimyo's Fall uh, chain. They might actually be the same characters as that because uh, very similar in style and nature and, of course, same artist. So if they were, I would not be surprised. Um, some of them have the ability to let you draw a random die instead of claiming one from the pool. Or if you have initiative, discard one card to get plus two attack on this attack. These are all the basic abilities on them. Battle at the beginning, you may discard a card to reroll up to three of your dice. Wow, you may reroll a green die that you are about to, to deploy. And of course, those are good abilities, and they actually come out of the cards, but the stronger ones are at the bottom here, like Green Shower. Uh, all your green die have plus two strength. That's very, very powerful, right? Uh, Primal uh, Crimson, double the strength of your die if you have the advantage, which is, is tough to get sometimes. Um, so artwork, spectacular. I, I, I love the style of artwork. I'm a big anime fan. If you like anime artwork as well, you're going to enjoy this. If you don't like anime artwork, you're not going to like this because it is literally uh, something I would definitely see on uh, on any of those Funimations and whatnot, uh, different yeah, on Funimation or and maybe Adult Swim, right? Uh, the uh, the combat cards, I'd like to see some more artwork come down on the bottom of these guys here. Uh, it's it, they, are, they do exactly what they need to do, and they have the different colors, which represents what... Uh, what they're going to be able to be played based on the leftover die in the pool has an interesting touch to it too or maybe you want all blue and your opponent wants all green and you're like well i could go for all blue because he'll definitely go for all green but is his ability going to be more strong going to be more strong stronger than mine and if so is he going to have the bonus against me um one negative i could find in the game that was pretty straightforward for me based on the fact that i play a lot of phone games that involve strengths and weaknesses is generally speaking water beats fire nature beats water and fire beats nature but in this case i think it's flipped which is weird to me that should just be the opposite way straight up change that because it's very very confusing i think most people are probably going to be confused by that uh little aspect i don't, don't see the need for it to be to be switched around in this game i don't see the the difference in it um, a nice little aspect of the game is being able to place one card down for initiative to pick and then of course being able to place an extra one down to gain a character so you could pick first but you might not get the character you want unless you're willing to sacrifice more cards and these cards are very valuable uh, another thing too is it didn't come with a bluff card so we actually had to add in our own uh, bluff card which is basically just an extra card we added. And that's a really cool aspect of the game too, being able to bluff during certain aspects of their initiative. Sometimes initiative cards will help you during certain uh, 
certain times and sometimes they will not. But uh, overall, it gave a nice little bluffing aspect to a die rolling alloc uh, alloc uh, allocation placement game. Uh, it's quick, it's fun, it's simple, and it does work for multiple players. It's one of those nice little filler games that has some brilliant artwork. And of course, the Daimyo's Fall line, if you like that kind of stuff, you're going to enjoy this one here as well. It's not a huge amount to the game, obviously. There's just some dice and some cards. But if you like that kind of thing, if you're into smaller games, then you'll be, you'll be interested in this one. I wouldn't necessarily say it's for kids uh, outright, because because the game does require a lot of thinking as to weaknesses and the cards in your hand and the different abilities on each opponent's uh, cards and whether you want to keep them and how you pick the die. So there is a lot of that going on. But I think a kid could learn how to play the game fairly easily. Overall, I enjoy this game. It's something you might want to check out if you're interested in this style of artwork and if you're interested in this style of gameplay. You can go ahead and check out down below on the kick for the Kickstarter link if you're interested in taking a look at Daimyo's Fall Dice Tuners, a game of strategy, a little bit of luck, and a lot of bit of figuring out the, the strengths and weaknesses. All right, guys, thanks for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here down below in the description as well as on our channel. Uh, remember, these are prototypes as a prototype, and the rules may or may not change throughout uh, the Kickstarter campaign. It, they often do, as well as the different production quality of the game, which is usually why I don't talk about too much about production, because it's very likely that they do change. Um, also, go ahead and check out our website. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Got tons of great stuff going on right now we'll have a new uh, giveaway for a really great game it's on my top five list of last year called vindication so let's check out my friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek right up there uh two great sites with great giveaways and a ton of new blog posts all right that's all i got for you this time guys and as always i look forward to dice tuning with you